Hello, everybody, wherever you may be, around the world, and see the shining sea. My name's Larry, and my call sign's Kilo 7 Hotel November. Welcome back to Ham Radio Live. I'd like to thank you for subscribing to the channel. It helps people find us here on YouTube that might have an interest in getting their ham radio license. Also, ham radio news and information and the forecast. What bands are good tonight? What bands might actually surprise you? We'll have that. Plus, big guest Richard Stubbs from MFJ joins us at the very bottom of the hour. It's going to be a great show. So we are very grateful that you have come to the channel. Thank you so much for joining us. My name's Larry. My call sign's Kilo 7 Hotel November. Welcome back to the Shack, 24th of May, 2021. Big guest Richard Stubbs is going to be joining us at the bottom of the hour. So much to do. First, if you'd like to get an amateur radio, the American Radio Relay League is there to help you get started. If you've always wanted to be in ham radio, this is a great place to start, even if you're outside the United States. Yeah, find them at www.arrl.org. They're great folks. And they'll help you get licensed. If you're in the UK, where we've had a big, big growth of ham radio license applications, find the Radio Society of Great Britain at www.rsgb.org. If you're in Canada or Australia, they have their own groups there. First, let's go with Australia. Wireless Institute of Australia can be found at www.wia.org. In Canada, the Radio Amateurs of Canada, they're really good folks, and they'll help you get licensed. www.rac.ca. And if you'd like to email the show, have a comment, want to say hello, please do so. At CQ, Ham Radio Live at gmail.com. Welcome to the show, everybody. It's great to see you, and I appreciate you coming. First, quick hellos, and then quickly into the news. we got a lot of news today. First, in Gunter, all the way from Germany, he has made it again. Yeah, and he's first. He says, I'm here, ladies and gentlemen, from the German frontier by the shores of the Rhine River. His name is Gunter. His call sign is Delta Kilo 5, Oscar November Victor. He's an amazing DX operator. We're grateful that he is here. Thank you so much, Gunter, for joining us. Also, Andy Cowley is here from the UK. Andy, hello. Good evening to you there. Also, present and accounted for. There he is, Eric from the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, Kilo 3, Echo Lima Golf. Eric, a pleasure to see you as well. Rod Clare is here from West Salem, from the West Salem Fine Wood Shop. I'll tell you what. That man, I've seen his work. Rod, you make some amazing wood products. He really does. His call sign is Kilo Juliet 7, Romeo Kilo Bravo. My brother joining us downstairs from Wi-Fi, John Newell is back. He's brand new to ham radio. Got his license last week. His new call sign, Victor Echo 5, Juliet Hotel November. Welcome to ham radio, John. Also, Ishmael here from... Dominica. Dominica, we're so glad to have you. We've got a little segment that'll surprise you today, Ishmael. Stick around for that. Joe is here, Alpha Golf 7 X-Ray Hotel. Cliff is here all the way. Look at this. This is great. He's Whiskey Delta 4, Oscar Bravo Papa. And Mike is here from the um, from the Great Britain Commonwealth, right here from Great Britain. It's great to see you. All right, let's get into the news because we've got lots to talk about. First of all, field day is coming up. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Less than a month away. Get some great gear. they got T-shirts. They've got stickers. they got mugs. they got all kinds of things. Field day, a chance to take your rig on the road and show it to the world. You can go to the park. You can go to the seashore. Go up to the mountains. Go to the lodge. Go somewhere in public and show your ham radio off. That's the whole point of field day. It's June 26th, June 27th. Make sure and be a part of that. Big special event station, Bove Island. Yep, it's coming. 2023, the Intrepid DX group. This takes literally, this is no lie, 27 days to get down there and back. It's literally between South America and, uh, and Africa, and it's not too far to the north of Oh, Antarctica. Yeah, pretty cold stuff there. Three Yankee Oscar Juliet, the Beauvais Island D Expedition is coming. We'll tell you more about that as well. Okay. In FCC news, you must have a new FRN number. If you're going to be going for a ham radio license in the U.S., must have the FRN and you need to have a valid email address. Those are both new rules now in the FCC. If you want a great book that is indispensable, if you're in ham or shortwave, the 
ARRL Antenna Book, and its 24th edition is available right now on Amazon or your local bookstore. Frederick Schaffen, it is a great ham fair. In fact, it's Europe's biggest, Europe's largest ham fair. You can walk the fairgrounds digitally. This is really cool. All the booths, all the sellers, all the folks that you would like to normally meet if you're walking the, the grounds there in Frederikshafen in Germany. Yep, you can do it online virtually, and it's really going to be cool. This is also happening the weekend of June 25th through June 27th of 2021. Going to be a great, great thing. You know, I want to tell you, a flagpole antenna that I'm building that I've put together, by the way, it's beautiful. My gosh, 24 feet high. I was going to go 28, but it's a little bit too tall, just to a fall of the house, just too tall. But it needs a balance. This uses ladder line. So 450 film ladder line is what it radiates with. One wire goes up the pole. One wire goes down the pole. It has to go to a balance because we're going to coax, right? The MFJ 912 is what you need. Now, this is not waterproof. Here's what you do. I'll show you. You get this item. You go ahead and you put the ladder line on top. You're building a, a big antenna that's got ladder line, right? And you need to be able to put it into coax and do it the right way. This will do the trick. The one key, excuse me, the one key is it's not waterproof. Now, you can get something out like, you know, maybe a hedge or something, or you could be real stealth, right? Look at this. Hollow boulder fits right there. Look at that. Put the boulder next to the flagpole. The balance sits right there underneath the flagpole, right there, underneath that boulder, and no one knows. Looks like a flagpole with that stone sitting right there protecting the MFJ 912 because it is not waterproof. But you put that boulder there. This is one dynamic bit of kit right here. Yep, MFJ 912. Put your balance antenna line into coax the right way with balance. So this is all set up. Also, a real big deal that many people know about, and this is very, very important. If you're running a vertical that's non-resonant, you need something like this. This is the MFJ 998 RT. The RT stands for Remote Tuner. Okay, remote tuner. This will handle up to 1,500 watts. Yeah, 1,500. Put on a couple of poles. We're going to stick it outside the flagpole antenna here on my QTH. And we're just going to run some hedges around the flagpole, make it look real pretty. We'll have this on some, on some posts behind it. We'll have the boulder sitting there protecting the ballon. And we'll have full remote control of the antenna tuner at the flagpole. Why is that important? Richard Stubbs is going to talk about this. This is indispensable. A remote tuner is very important for your shack because it's, it's important if you're using an antenna that is not resonant and it's outside. When you have an antenna that's not resonant outside and it's just not doing too good, right? You don't have good, maybe you get like on 17, but nothing else works, right? A remote antenna tuner helps to tune not really, but helps to find a good impedance match at the antenna. That way you're not multiplying that mess all up that coax, which causes heat. So that means loss. Loss means when you're transmitting out that antenna, most of your power is going into the ground. It's not going out that antenna, in my case, a flagpole. That antenna tuner takes care of that. Instead of heating the ground, you're heating the air with smoke and RF, and you're making DX calls. That's what that does. That's the MFJ 998RT available at either MFJ Enterprises or you can find it at your local ham radio store. Propagation conditions right now, well, they're not too bad. MUFs are all in the world. Alaska is a little higher than this right now. They're about uh, 12 megs right now. We've got uh, Boulder, Colorado. It's really more, it's getting closer to 17 meters. This is a little bit earlier this morning. Ascension Island, right there at 24.55 megs. South Africa at 16.6. Athens, Greece, 17.15. We had a 7.27 MUF at Neve Island in the, in the South Pacific. And Darwin, Australia was at 14.44. World map of noise floors today. Noise is down across the world today. That's a true story. Noise is down. So we do have a low noise floor. Take a look especially at the Southern Hemisphere. Argentina, Brazil, Australia, New Zealand, 
Hawaii, look at 20 meters, see the trend? S1, except for South Australia, S1's across the board. So to the south, 20 meters is very, very quiet. Once you get north, we're getting into those S4 readings here in North America. S3 on 20 in in England right now, S4 on 40. In Germany, the last reading I had was S3 on 40, S1 on 20. And out of India, 40 meters, S6, and 20 was S5. If you're looking to make some calls tonight or today... 2017, 15, possible 12 and 10 openings tonight. Sorry, today on uh, your ham frequencies. So on your ham radio, you can also make some possible e-skip calls in 6 and 4. Nighttime frequencies for ham radio, 160, 80, I should say 80, 75. Sorry about that. 80, 75, 60 meters, 40 meters, 30 meters, and 20 meters. Yes, you heard it. There it is. It's 20 meters tonight. Should have a low enough noise floor and enough SFI and a low enough K index that we should be fine. Short wave bands in the daytime. Should reach them on 31, 25, 19, 16, 13. And 11. If you're a shortwave night owl like I am, well, you know 49 meters is always the place to be. You can always find shortwave work as well on 120, 90, 75, 60. Of course, that beautiful 49 meter band where so many stations are clustered up, plus 41, 31, 25, and tonight possibly 19 meters. So keep an eye out there on the shortwave bands on the higher frequencies tonight. The maximum usable frequency is not going to be too much off of that. And we have very low noise floors. So that's a good reason why you should have your radio on tonight. Good DX should get some very good DX around the world. And that means even on those typical daytime frequencies, 20 meters of her hams, now you get up there around 19 and, you know, on, on short wave, that's pretty good at night. That really is. I'd like to welcome you to the show. We've got a very special guest coming here. Just a minute or so. Richard Stubbs. He's the national sales manager for MFJ out of Starkville, Mississippi. Before we get to him, I know you guys have been talking a lot. We will get to some welcomes because we do want to say a quick hello. Before I do that, I want to show a very quick video, very, very quick, of one of our viewers. He's in Domica. Yep, I'm sorry, Dominica, and that is in the Caribbean. His name is Ishmael. Now, he's only 17 years old. He's a very young ham. He's also very smart. He's gaining and gaining and gaining in knowledge. Let's take a look. Ishmael, I think this is a surprise for you, isn't it? Here's some of Ishmael's work around the world. Take a look, everybody. Hey, guys. It's Ishmael Samuel. I'm a radio call sign, j 72 IMS. And I've been at him for a year and eight months. I live in Dominica. And as you can hear, the chickens are making some useless noises. Uh, so I want to introduce you guys to my uh, Discord server. It's Ham Radio Hub. Um, we have about uh, 14 people. About 14 people. Uh, we've just started. And... Uh, I will send you the link so you can join um, and just to let you know subscribe to my channel bye there you go that's Ishmael his call sign is Juliet 72 India Mike Sierra inviting you to his discord channel discord is kind of like whatsapp it's kind of the same type of thing okay and his hub is called ham radio hub Find him on Discord at Ham Radio Hub. Join his channel. I'm sure he'd love that. But that's Ishmael up close. Isn't that cool? That's Ishmael. I saw some of his work. I just couldn't use some of it. Ishmael, I'm sorry, because the camera kind of goes a lot like this. If you keep it straight on there, I'll be sure and put some of your work on the show. I really will. You have my word on that, Ishmael. You're doing great stuff. Keep up the good work down there, my friend. James Stanley, along with Monty. That's James. His call sign, Mike 7, Bravo X-Ray Tango. Monty's call sign, however, is Mike 7, Bravo X-Ray Tango slash K9. And Monty's cool because Monty, see, Monty never had to pass the ham exam. See, because his dad, which is James, passed the ham exam. Monty, being his dog, 
I got kind of a, you know, the okay to just be a ham anyway. So welcome to the show, guys. Good to see you from Great Britain. Always a pleasure. Always. McBoots, good to see you, man. Loved, loved, loved the email. Thanks for sharing that. And he's got a battery for field day. We'll be talking about field day prep coming up later next week. So next week's show, we'll have a special show for you about field day and exactly how it works getting ready for it what you need things like that i hope you find it useful it's one of those things that we all look forward to every year right in the u.s field day it's time we show off our radios and we have a good time so that's going to be fun hello kevin mike zero mike charlie lena joining us all the way from australia it's great to have you kev thanks for coming today always love getting advanced class folks here John Patrick Reed is here. Thank you. That's a compliment to me. Looking forward to the show, man. I hope I don't disappoint. Like yesterday, we talked about the scam thing. This is so cool. At the end, if now, foul language, yes, I'm going to warn you, foul language. But if you want to see a scammer absolutely, literally lose their mind, literally lose their mind, you got to see this at the very end of the show. Oh, yeah. At the end of the show, it is the most amazing call where a scammer gets taken. It's really good. So we talked about phone scams. Again, for folks that are in ham radio that may be a little bit elderly, don't fall for the social security phone call. Don't fall for the vehicle warranty call. Don't fall for the one where they tell you you've got a refund. Don't don't do any of those things because it's just a scam. You're you're not gonna you're not gonna want to get involved in that. People are getting lost. Literally, they're they're gaining millions of dollars a year doing this. Don't accept the phone call. Just simply say no. All right? That's the best thing you can do. All right. I think we got a very special guest about to join us here all the way from Starkville, Mississippi. I am so doggone honored, thrilled, and pleased as punch to have this guy come back because, in all honesty, I call him my friend. I do. I call him my mate. Remember? It's my mate, Richard Stubbs from MFJ. I'd like to welcome him to the show. Richard, it is truly an honor and a privilege to have you come on today. Let me get you on screen. Just, he's got a duck. Oh, my gosh. He squeezed a duck at me. I'll get him on the screen here in just a moment. Hang, hang on a second, my friends. Richard is joining us from MFJ headquarters all the way in Starkville, which is kind of cool. So we're grateful to have him come. Why you're not popping up the screen now, I don't know. But we'll get that fixed, I promise here. Hang on a second, Richard. How are you today? I'm good, Larry. How about you? Am I, am I not on the screen? I'm not finding you on the screen, but I'll get you there. Don't worry about that. We'll get you on the screen. Everything going good today? Oh, I'm doing great. I'm doing wonderful. Good to see you again. No, it's great to see you too, man. I, I, got this, I look at the I got folks this to see. I my last tour. For, that's a this little duck, little or is yeah, that a little, little Oregon a, duck? A rubber duck from a fireman ham. He was uh, he was really cool. Ah, oh, that's pretty cool, man. Well, we're, we're giving I mean, tours again, Larry. We're open up. Are you giving tours, really? Yeah, we're wide open. We're we're the mask mandates oh, been man. lifted here in Stark Vegas and most of the South, as you know. That is and, so uh, cool, we're, buddy. We're back that is to giving so cool. tours again, so it's it's kind of fun. That is, you know what? I'm so glad to hear that because, in all honesty, you know, one of the things that has been tough with the coronavirus is that it's closed access for people around the world to be able to meet up with you and to be able to, you know, see what's going on and and get information, all of that stuff. It's just messed everything up so bad. Yeah. So it really is such an honor to have you here today. We're going to get the video part. For worked out it, it worked the other day it's like everything right it worked the other day and then it doesn't it's gotta we work can, yeah it's gotta. we can hear you so that's good we can hear you um we talked about today a little bit the mfj 998 because that is such an important product it really is the rt version um yeah that's it that's the one and i want to get you on camera with this because in fact what i'm gonna do here's what i'm gonna do i'm just gonna just just I'm going to do something I don't normally do, but we're going to do it anyway. Here, hang on a second, buddy. I'm going to just get you on the screen without me on the screen because I don't want me on the screen anyway. I just don't want to. Uh, I, brought, I brought the board, Larry, because I wanted people to see the quality of this workmanship. I mean, it looks like a piece of art to me. I want to hang it on the wall, you know? Oh, absolutely. What's inside? What's inside the 998RT? Like yeah. you were talking about the other day. Yeah. 
it is it is truly for folks that haven't seen it on the inside it is really really special so what we're going to do i'm going to bring richard here on the screen there he is you can see richard stubbs now that is richard live from mississippi and richard's going to take over from here now richard tell us if you would how's mr jude doing doing okay He's, he comes in every day. He's 78 years old. He's a workaholic. He, he's, he's more of a uh, 1130 man instead of a 10 o'clock man back in the other days. But that's, hey, that's his prerogative, man. He can do what he wants. Oh, that's he's, great. He's, he's built this thing for 50 years. He can, he can take a little break here and there, you know? No kidding. We've got Richard Stubbs yeah, he's live still, from MFJ. He's still here. doing his thing, that's for sure. Mine, call extension uh, 113. Well, good thing you don't have to call extension 113. What would you think about that? That'd be bad, right? Yeah, My I goodness. can't turn the in intercom off, unfortunately. And nah, so just, uh, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. we got lots of people. you got people from four continents right now. You have the Middle East. We've got Europe. We have, uh, let's see, Asia. And we have Australia here, it looks like. So we've got a lot of folks here to say hello to you. The, um, In fact, uh, let me get to the questions here if we can. Let's see. Uh, Eric from Pennsylvania first says 20 meters open to Europe last night. Yes. And 20 should be open tonight as well. Looks really, really good. If you have any questions, anything whatsoever, please feel free and have Richard. Just let Richard know what you'd like to you know, know about MFJ products. You have a question, something about MFJ. Please go ahead and just post in the comment section, and we will do everything we can to make sure that we get that done for you. Okay, Richard, tell us what's new over there. We talked about the 998RT and the importance of having it. Tell us about that, why it's so important. Yeah, let me let me show that PC board again since we uh, – this is the PC board of the 998RT. Of course, it's, it's covered with a – ABS plastic cover and it's got a rubber ceiling around it to seal out the water but look at that work I mean it's just fascinating right up here you see this little red spot Larry that's a sticker from where Mike you met the boys yeah uh, Mike and uh, Josh and Mark and everybody that goes through these testing procedures they treat this thing like it's inside of a cabinet first and they test it in the PC board format and then it's tested again once it gets into the full size uh, of the, um, the cabinet and, you know it, that that model board is also used as an end shack model so it can also be put inside uh, the shack in a, in a basic uh, MFJ metal cabinet okay and but, yeah, just the so people know RT is, is, yeah fascinating that product can be outdoors so that could be outdoors in the rain in the wind all that stuff and be just fine yes yeah yes that's a great There's a way to mount it you got mounting holes all over the chassis of course this is stainless steel but uh you know your connections are all there to mount this but the top cover of this is it's built to be mounted with the cover on top to protect all the electronics and it's yep. and it's handled all kinds of weather we had an ice storm here uh, gosh it's been a while back in April we had several ice storms so it survived the ice it survived the rain of course we get lots of rain here in Mississippi like you do in Oregon oh yeah and then and we get the heat and right now we this weekend Larry it got up to uh, 86 or something I think and so the wife and I got into the pool for the first time. That was great. And uh, the water was crisp, 80 degrees, but uh, it was it was fun. So we get a lot of sunshine down here. It gets pretty hot, uh, very humid, and, and these uh, tuners can survive, you know, the greatest developments, that's for sure. Tell us, if you would, Richard, we talked a little bit about the reason why you want a remote tuner versus a tuner in a shack. And it's basically when you have a non-resonant antenna, it protects the coax between the antenna and your shack from just heating up the ground because of a bad SWR. Do you typically sell quite a few of those antenna tuners? And the reason I ask is because it's such a vital part of a ham radio antenna if it's not truly resonant. We sell both models probably. Uh, the end shack model probably sells a little bit more. You know, not everybody wants to go out to the antenna and, and uh, work on your tuner if you have to. But uh, a lot of these outdoor uh, remote antenna tuners are being sold now. In fact, you know, DX Engineering sells this with their 43-foot vertical as a package deal. So you know that 
when those guys are saying, hey, this is the real deal right here, you know, that's it's real. Those guys are very serious. And uh, but, the, yeah, the remote tuners are selling as equally well. We have a 300 watt model. We have a 200 watt model. And we have a 600 watt model. And of course, the legal limit one like like you've got mm-hmm. that's yeah. going to help that flagpole operate. So, oh, absolutely. Yeah, they're all they're all. Um, uh, you know, in shack models sell outsell the remotes, but I don't know what the thinking is. I mean, it's it's uh, to each his own, I guess. Sure. Well, you've uh, got you've got the advantage when you use a remote tuner. You have the advantage of making sure you're you've got good impedance at the point of the antenna. So right. as it comes in, you're getting a good solid SWR coming into your shack that's already been matched. That's the advantage of yeah. having it, you know. So. And obviously, there's a lot of hams that are in, in apartments and condos and house restricted uh, antenna situations. So, having a big, bulky tuner out there at the antenna sometimes cannot be a factor for those people. Absolutely. So you got you got to take the tuner inside. But uh, you know, they they all work equally well. But having the antenna tuner at the antenna is pretty pretty strong. Absolutely, we got a, Ishmael from uh, Dominica. Who is? I'm trying to say it right because it said I think it's Dominica. Dominica. No, Dominica. I'm learning. He's in the Caribbean. Dominica. Anyway, no, it's not Dominica. It's. Oh, it's not. It, oh, I it's thought it was enough. too. Oh, it's it's like... Dominica. Dom. I'll say it. He'll he'll tell me again. I'll listen to his YouTube video. He says he wants to thank the MFJ company for actually having an MFJ off center fed dipole. He loves his MFJ off center fed antenna. Yeah, the 2010, that's a very capable antenna. You get to 40 through 40, 20, 15, and 10 meters. So, you know, that's about all you need for operation, and you don't need a tuner with that antenna, although it can be helpful. Uh, but that, that is a very effective antenna and very economical, as, as I must, might say also. I think it's a uh, long leg is 66 feet, and I think then the other leg is like 22 or something like that. Mm-hmm. So you got to have a little bit of room, but that's not that's not as big as a G5 RV, which is 102 feet long. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and then we got Andy from the uh, UK. He asks about how are things going with staffing? You were running your tail off forever, man, with like 50 million things to do all at once. I'm surprised you're still standing, buddy. We hey, we got uh, we just hired a whole lot of folks, especially Good. in the front office. And, and now it's like, uh, what's that ZZ Top, uh, the island of women. Uh, yeah, all, all of a sudden, Larry, it's not just a man's hobby in here anymore. No. we got women running around all over the place doing exciting things. Nice. So nice. I'm back to doing my own regular job, getting out newsletters every twice a week and doing some Facebook posts and talking to you. And I hope to do more of this PR type stuff. Good. And obviously, I'll be given some um, a lot of factory tours over the next couple of months and years as we get back into normalcy. Yeah, yeah, and totally understand that, my friend. I um, this I'm sorry, I just got a phone call from a doctor, which is great because uh, <laughs> yeah, you're you're, you're supposed to have uh, yeah. There's some things going on anyway. So okay, tell us if you would. Tom in Bahrain had a great question. Tom asks, if I call. You had another new amplifier following the 1306, possibly. He just curious if maybe, you know, something's, you know, is there something in the that, mix there going on, man? Yeah, I guess that somehow got leaked out. I, I don't know how, but uh, how and why. But yeah, there is one in the works that's that's going to replace basically the 1306 at some point. But that's that's not that's still in prototype phase and as you know you you saw things that are ready but not ready because you got to get all the parts in you got to get through the fcc red tape you got to get through all that don't I mean, get rid of my 1306 and just, because, just because we're working on something doesn't mean that it's uh it's going to come out next week you know yeah. it doesn't happen like that as you know you, you saw know. several things that jared had was working on that still are not on the marketplace yet so well you but, know I have a 1306. I I have a 1306, and I that's that that amplifier is a rock star. It really is. I see it. I didn't in your screen there. So yeah, it is. It is. It band switches. It literally makes your radio a 1200 watt rig on legal bands. You don't want to do this on 60 or 30, but you know. Yeah, those 
those guys at Ameritron do a fantastic job. You want to talk about an electronic piece of art? That look inside that thing. Oh, I have. Oh, geez, the inductors in there are huge. They really are. Oh well, my gosh. We have so much, so many people who'd like to talk to you here. So let me try and get the best way I can. Gunter in Germany said. Uh, happy with his MFJ 939i auto tuner for outdoor portable BDX work. He uses it quite a bit too. Yeah, the 939. Talk about that, Richard. That's a very high speed tuner. Quickly gets oh, to your your impedance those mismatch. Little, those little tuners Man. are, yeah, those little tuners are fast and you know. But the same circuitry is in the 998 and the 988 uh, RT as well. But um, yeah, that that little package has been. A barn burner. I mean, you know, you have one of those also, uh, but uh, they are economical for the for the brand new ham. I mean, fantastic buy. What one sixty nine? You get your interface cable with your IC seventy three hundred or whatever you got your Yesu, and you hook that up and you just go to town. Two hundred watts full output on digital sideband and CW. Mm -hmm. I mean, it can't be beaten. Tell Gunter, it's falling on beer, bitte. <laughs> okay, we'll, we'll do that. I'm going to try and make you a little bigger on the screen here, buddy, so that you get a better <laughs> view. All right, so uh, also, Kevin, Kilo Charlie 3. Oh, no, I love his call sign. O-N-O. He, uh, he talks about you. He loves MFJ, but he's had a little problem with uh, Balan that he has, an ATR-15. And, you know, if he has a problem with that, tell... Could you tell folks if they have a problem with an MFJ product, what uh, the yeah. process is to go through? Well, you call us, email us. Uh, ATR15, that is the, that's the junior of the ATR30. That one was designed to handle 3,000 watts at, you know, at, at any mode, key down type stuff. So that ballon in there is, is pretty much the same ballon that is used in the 989D and the 9982 that we have also. It's a four to one, uh, t two stack toroids and, and wrapped with the Teflon wire. So there, there shouldn't be much that's going on with that. But if he has a problem, uh, sounds like he was a US gay guy. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Call us at 662-323-0549 on the tech line. Those are the parts guys, the repair guys, the technical support. Or he can email us on the help desk. It's on our website. Or email me directly, and I'll find out the answer for him. Uh, and mine is mfjcussserve at mfjenterprises.com. That's all short, you know, run together. It's MFJ Customer Service is what it's shortened out as. Uh, okay, so MFJ yeah, we're, Customer we're to, Service. We're here to help. We're here to answer questions. Uh, I think we're the... Probably the only people in the business still that have an 800 tech line, uh, although we're trying to transfer over to the 662 one because it really doesn't matter on an 800 line anymore because yeah. everybody's yeah. got cell phones. You can call anywhere in the in the U.S. at least. Yeah. So, yep. yeah, we're Will here Myers. every day, 8 to 4, 30 p.m. CST, and uh, here to help. We got a question here from the state of Wisconsin, William Myers, Kilo Alpha 8 Golf India Mike. He said, "Hi, Richard. Is your supply chain starting to recover from COVID issues? The company that he works for still has some shortages. Just wondering how MFJ is holding up with this." That yeah, same thing. I mean, uh, you know, I've talked to other people in other industries, the furniture business, the the, the plywood has gone skyrocketing. You know, we at High Gain and Cushcraft, we can't even package and build antennas right now because of an aluminum tubing shortage. Yes. And people are going, what? What's going on? You know, well, we can't make antennas. Well, we did get some aluminum in, and now we're waiting on for the big part of it to come in. <laughs> and uh, then we can really start making those AV680s that you're so familiar with, and oh, yeah. the AV640s, and the ones that are really popular sellers. Uh, right now, we are we are in bad way uh, at High Gain and Cushcraft, and at... Uh, uh, Ameritron, we went through some bad times on the solid state uh, amplifiers back during the summer. We couldn't get transistors for the 500M. There, there's been numerous parts problems. There's been very few people problems as a effect or uh, as an effect of the COVID. But we had had that. We one time we had three of our techs from Ameritron go out with the COVID all oh at the same time. And, Are they all three okay? Imagine what that what that could do to your factory. 
uh, when you sure. don't have testers there. Did they? Uh, did they MFJ, all rec- Richard? Did they all? Yeah. Did they all recover okay from that? Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Good. You know, they're all young guys. Uh, they're not Good. as old as me and you, but uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. We're we're the old guys, you know. Yeah. So we, we would we maybe would not recover from that, but anyway, they did. Uh, we had a few cases here at MFJ, but not as many. Uh, knock on wood. I mean, it's been amazing. You know, being in a factory of over two hundred people and all the different factories that we've had as uh, little uh, effect from it as possible. Yeah. Now, at MFJ, we are back ordered and people are crying for their product. They want MFJ product and we just can't deliver it yet because we're, we're missing some parts. We're, you know, we're, we're building what we can make right now, Larry, and, and cranking it out. The, the stores are crying for product. HRO, uh, Gigaparts, DX Engineering, r Electronics, they're all wanting their product. And we're trying to get it to them, but it's it's uh, it's tough. And it's, it's not really just MFJ. Right this whole thing is not just. I mean, it's it's Elecraft. It's Flex. Oh, yeah. You can't get a Flex Maestro. This is a Maestro over here. You can't get a Flex Maestro until October. That's as soon as you can get a Flex Maestro yeah. right now. Yeah, the I was told whole the radio ma- companies are, are feeling the same yeah, pain. Everything is. Everybody is. So it's just yeah, part I of ordered, the world right now. I ordered a couch. You'd think you could go buy a couch in a furniture store. Well, they told me two to twelve weeks. Well, we're edging toward the ninth week, so it's gonna be <laughs> it's gonna be that twelve weeks probably. You ever build a wood bench instead? No, I'm just joking. Uh, yeah. Just you need joking. something comfortable, Larry, to sit back on the on the couch and relax <laughs> after right. a hard day of work. You know? No kidding. <laughs> no kidding. And Kevin, Kilo Charlie. 23 Oscar November Oscar don't give up on that I, I mean that sincerely he said he gave up because he tried three times trying to get this resolved Kevin get a hold of him MJ they'll work with you and they'll do the very best to make sure that you're that you're okay and you're he happy he was talking about that balance again yeah yeah he mentioned about they just had a hard time with it I just want to make sure he understands that you guys will do your best to make sure it's right so yeah I can't imagine uh, what could be wrong with the balance but uh, yeah the Maritron they got several guys that answered their that's actually an Ameritron product and Ameritron has their own people, and the guy who would handle that would be Rob Hood. I think you met him over there. He's a repair yep. guy. Yep. Very knowledgeable guy. He's been there for 20-something years. Yeah. And he would be the one to handle that ATR-15 Ballon. And uh, he is at Ameritron Service at mfjenterprises.com. Okay, Kev, did so you get that? if you, you want to hit him up by email, I know he answers his email because I, I copy him on it several times a day. Is that and one word, Richard, answer. Ameritron Service, all one word, or is there a dash? Ameritron right? Service, okay. all run together and all lowercase, yeah. Just Perfect. Ameritron Service at MFJEnterprises.com. Right. And he'll be speaking directly to Rob Hood, which is the Ameritron tech all right. uh, for Perfect. that product. Thank you, my mm-hmm. friend. Got a nice comment yeah. here from the Middle East. Tom Bar in Bahrain said, sooner or later, every ham is going to have something from MFJ. That's pretty nice. Thank you very much. That's for that always time. amazing. Think yeah. about that. Around the world, that's quite a statement, isn't it? It really is. You know, I, every time I, I look in some of the magazines, of course, that you know the magazines are getting a little bit weaker and stuff, but you'll see pictures of guys' shacks and you go and you, you know naturally being an MFJ guy, I want to go look in there and see what he's got. A Maritron, <laughs> high gain, Kush sure. grab, whatever. And and I usually find something. I mean, you know, and I've I've seen a lot of pictures of shacks and a lot of QSL cards on my wall back here that that have MFJ stuff in them, and that's that's always fun to do. And it's kind of hard not to have something MFJ. You're, you're right. I mean, yep, yep. Ishmael. Really got paid as bad. <laughs> <laughs> We're live with Richard Stubbs from MFJ. If you have a question, please feel free to put it in the comments section. Ishmael, again from Dominica, uh, says, I have the MFJ 2010 and MFJ 874. Love the antenna and the SWR meter. So he's very happy with that. Um, Alan asks this question Is there an MFJ N Fed half wave? 10 through 40 meter multibander. Yeah, that's the uh, the 1984 series. We make a 1984 LP, a MP, and an HP. Uh, one is for QRP work. And again, I think that's a 66 feet long wire to a ballon box and um, with, the, with the ballon in it, uh, matching network. And you run that up into a tree and then run the other part down by your base with a ground rod and uh, 
and then take the coax into the shack. And that's a very effective antenna too. A lot of guys, <coughs> excuse me, there have been a lot of reviews on that product on the YouTube channels. Um, and then we make another one for, that's the uh, 1982, which is, uh, I think it's 132 feet long. So you get the 80 through 10, but the 40 through 10 meter model is the 1984. And we make one for QRP, 30 watts, 300 watts, MP, and then high power is uh, 800 watts. We can't Very go good. legal limit with that one. There you go. All right, Alan. Well, there's your answer. And uh, you're going to see something pop up on the screen there just because I'm going to goof with somebody here. I want to welcome uh, somebody who helped us with this and also is exceptionally smart. I just got a little text from him. I'd like to welcome, the, you, you know this guy, I'm going to welcome Jared Marsh to the stream. I'm ready to introduce myself. My, buddy's my name is Wild E. Coyote. Genius. There you go. Yeah, he is. And he, this guy is truly a genius. What is his degree in again, Richard? Nuclear physics. And he's got like a doctorate. Is that what it is? Uh, yeah, he's a doctor of. Uh, I he's got yeah, he's doctor doctor of nuclear physicist. Stuff. Doctor. You know, he, wow. but, but, but he worked for us for a long time. He's been my friend for. Um, Gosh, I don't know how long I've known Jared now. Probably eight to ten years. He's a special guy. We did a guy. ham fest together. I've, I've met his family. He's a great guy. Yeah. He designed a lot of great products for MFJ during mm. during the time he was here. Oh, now, yeah. I'm sad. Sadly, he's going back to his old job up in Maryland. He was working at Mississippi State this past year as, as teaching uh, nuclear physics. And now he's heading back up to Maryland to make the big bucks and make bombs and whatever. We, we probably shouldn't talk about no. that. He might have to, shh, shh, quiet now. Quiet. I can be careful. Kevin <laughs> in Great Britain says MFJ914 auto tuner extender looks like a neat idea. Do you have any idea on what the tuning range of that could be? Well, there's so there's so little impedance matching range on the built-in tuners in the radio. So the, Mr. Jew came up with that product. Gosh, that's been long time ago i can't even think about how <laughs> I, I know i do the catalogs and so it's been i know we introduced that right on the edge of the automatic uh, the automatic tuners that were built into the radios so he built that to help in the 80 meters primarily because a lot of the uh, internal tuners of the radios cannot handle those impedance matching ranges so you're looking at uh, probably 1200 ohms impedance matching range on that product uh, to help boost the um, the uh, tunability of that an that an the antenna for that frequency range they want to operate, you've got a, a just a simple box now, uh, coax input uh, from the radio, coax input out to the antenna, and then a basically a capacitor that adds capacitance into the equation to help them match 40, 40 to 80 meters. I would say it it takes a uh, it takes a lot to get there, and those built-in uh, tuners in the radios can't handle it. Very good. We're live with Richard Stubbs from MFJ Enterprises. Any questions, feel free. Put them in the comment section. Gunter from Germany. My doctor called to let me know that I need to do more DX. And yeah, should be doing that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. okay. Thanks, Gunter. Appreciate that. Ishmael yeah, in I what's... <laughs> There's the duck. Ishmael with uh, his call sign is Juliet 72 India Mike Sierra. What's a good amplifier that can boost up his ICOM 9100? He's got 100 watts out of that when he's using his HF out of it, and he'd like to get to about 500 watts. What antenna, well, I'm sorry, what amplifier would you recommend for him? Would you say the, the LS606? The most economical or amplifier H. out there first would be to go to the tube set. Yeah. Which, you know, uses the 811As, and that would yeah. be the AL811. Yeah. Larry, we still sell more AL811s and 811Hs than we do the whole amplifier round. Now, the solid state, the solid state's catching up, but when you're talking about a thousand dollars, yep, most hams can afford that. Yep. But yeah, the 600 would be about a 400 watt amplifier. There, uh, it depends on on the bands uh, operating. Uh, it's not always perfect on all the bands to get that kind of power output but obviously the 811 can handle it if you want to step up and go to the 811h not too much more money a few yeah. more s units and you know those are 
very capable, and they're small. They're they're desktop. I mean, yep. you know, like like the size of your station there. It's not like you're putting a, a seventy six pound fifteen hundred up there on your on your uh, your desk there. You're, right. It's still a thirty two pound amplifier that's you know about the size of a nine eighty nine D, a manual tuner. So yep. that one would be very uh, capable. But and you know they, now you we know, got six. That's a four two model. Now we got six oh six. Yeah. And we got the 606, which is the solid state, kind of like the size of the the 1306 you see over there, but not as long. Mm -hmm. And it's got the automatic band switching and the six meters built into it. And, mm -hmm. you know, that's – but then you start, you start talking about more money, obviously. I think for the 811, he oh, can get that. That's the best, the that's the best amp in, in yeah. all of ham radio. You can't touch that you can price. Save a, couple of, a couple of paychecks and, and have it. Have an amplifier on your desk, you know, the next uh, in about three weeks, probably. You know, I think the price per watt. I I showed you that price per watt. Yeah, right. Thirteen oh six is by far the best for solid state. It is. It just kills it for yeah, that any amplifier for a tube amp. The eight eleven and the eight eleven H are tops as well. How how hard are those to get right now? Uh, unfortunately, yeah, hard to get back orders. Mm -hmm. We're just we're just back ordered, Larry. It's it's we're building we're building those amps, but there are so many orders in from you know during that COVID period that that whole two years that we missed out of all of our lives. Everybody was ordering amplifiers. They want to they want tuners. They want to amplifier. Everything is back ordered on us, and so you are looking at probably more than six weeks to get an amplifier if you if you order today uh, now that said that's from us direct but the dealers are having trouble getting them also i mean we're shipping them to them but they're already back ordered to them as well whoever's got to order it the best bet that anybody can do is get their order in with a reputable dealer and just hold on just like i'm doing with my couch i'm waiting on my couch just getting I'm that couch. Patient. Getting I'm in that... nine weeks, and I'm, and I'm, I've got maybe three more weeks to go to get that couch. But, you know, I'm going to love it when I get it. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, thank you on that, Richard. Appreciate that. And that's and that's common to all, seriously, all of ham radio. People are just, they're back ordered. Everybody is. It's because of getting those parts. It's just the way it works. Uh, Mike says, got my MFJ 1708B SDR. Oh, From yeah. Giga Parts, who sent it to the UK, works great with his RSP1A. Talk a little bit about that product. I have one as well. And for people that don't know the importance of having that with uh, like an RSP, if you've got an RSP DX or a regular RSP1 or 2, how much that product helps you because you can transmit and not hurt the RSP. You know, uh, Larry, that product came about from the right. RS Play. People, I, I think I told you that our SDR play people, yep. uh, they contacted us and said that they were showing people how to modify the old switch was made for boat anchors. You remember how Mr. Jew likes boat anchors? Oh, you know, yeah. The old receive, oh, yeah. Big, big giant suckers, the receive and transmit <laughs> boxes. That box was originally designed for tra uh, transmit receive delay between the between those big old boat anchor rigs. And so they were taking it at SDR Play and modifying it somehow to make it work for their uh, SDR Play and uh, modern transceiver. So he contacted us and Steve, uh, the English guy, very cool guy. You should have him on sometime. He's 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 an awesome chap. Mm -hmm. uh, but anyway, he he came to us and said, "Here, I've got this design for you." He gave us the drawings. He gave us everything. Steve Brightman, that's his name. Okay. And. Uh, he, uh, he gave us the stuff, and, and we made a new version that became the 1708B slash dash SDR and yes. SDR. Yes, that's the one I and, have. And, and, and that's all from him. Wow. And he reached out to us. That's the generosity of being a nice guy in the business. The MFJs, you know, we work with other people. We've worked with several uh, ham radio businesses over yes, the years, yeah. which is uh, a unique situation. Yeah. You know, Alpha Delta had bought our switches before. They had bought uh, our um, um, fiberglass insulators that we mm -hmm. do with all of our antennas. Um, just different people have we have worked with over the years, and, and it's and it's a very helpful situation for both parties yeah. uh, most of the time. 
Yeah. You know. Yeah. Well, that's the way life goes, too. I mean, it's never a perfect world. Kevin, uh, he said, uh, what do you want help with? And, Kev, what I would do is I would contact who Richard said to get a hold of on that for your balance. And I'm sure they can work something out. I'm sure they can make it right because that's what they do. Um, he says it's a dual wound, four to one, going to a one to one. Can they still make me one? I don't want to confuse you with all the ones there. I'm sure we still. I, I'm. I'm sure we can still make him one. Yeah, and that's not yeah. a problem. I, so you I, go, I would copy Rob Hood on it and 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 copy me on it, and just in case if yeah. for some reason he's saying he he's saying he he's contacted us and we haven't answered. I, I you know, yeah. I, I, I find that so hard to believe, but if it it could happen, maybe there was a situation where he was out or something. Sure. But, um, certainly copy me on it also, and we'll get it taken care of. There you go. All right, Kev. Uh, Nikolai, want to welcome you all the way from Romania. Thanks for coming to the show, buddy. What a joy. Great to have you, Romania. Wow. Great to have you. Wow. Question for you. He says, what MFG equipment do you recommend for a beginner ham operator? Alternatively, what advice do you have for a new ham? Uh, new ham, start out slow. Don't go crazy. Don't blow your whole wad all in one game. Uh, you know, do some do some thinking about it. Pick up the catalogs, read, talk to people, find out what they're using. Um, but obviously, uh, on our end, the you know, start out with a 200 watt tuner. You can go bare bones down to a 901B at like 109, I think. Or you can step up to that auto tuner and get the one that you have, Larry, the 939. 939. Oh, that's the best tuner I have. Yeah, it it saves right. you some money. And then for antennas, you know, start out simple. Um, the NFEDs are very popular right now, and they're yep. very economical. It's not something you're going to break your, your wallet on. And uh, so we can... You know, we can't help out with the radio, although we can. We got little niche radios. You can start out with a 40 meter sideband rig uh, from MFJ, but, uh, you know, most people want to start out with a good radio. So, an IC7300, for instance, like Ray has sold to us many a times uh, oh, from yeah. ICOM. And then, uh, you know, one of our little 939i tuners, and then an NFED, a 1982, if you got the room, 132 feet. Are those OCFDs like the other gentleman was mentioning? That's a very effective antenna. And so, uh, from our side of it, you're looking at maybe 300 bucks. Yeah, for and both your things. Radio. So yeah. yeah, don't don't go haul wild into this thing and then get frustrated. You know, start out inexpensively, and you can always sell that equipment later. Right. And and move right. up to the next great thing. Right. Uh, well, you don't need an amplifier, as as many know. A hundred watts and a wire would get you out. You can talk. Yeah. And even QRP, we all know this. <laughs> I just dumped you. I just dumped you right out of there. Sorry, buddy. You know, oh. um, you know, we talked before about how MFJ is is all about worry free guarantee. Could you talk a little about that? The worry-free guarantee from MFJ. I think it's so well, unique in the hobby. You know what I mean? It's something that most people just don't have. Martin Jew did that. I mean, it's not my invention. He did that back 1972, I guess, is what he came up with it. Uh, it's actually called, Larry, the no matter what warranty. That's it. Yeah. So, so if I take this and I'm sitting at home and I'm pulling around <laughs> and all of a sudden, for <laughs> plunk, it falls on the floor, mm -hmm. uh, that means that we're going to take care of it in some form or fashion our way that we can. Now, um, that means that we are going to repair it or replace it no matter what for one full year from mm -hmm. your purchase date uh, on your invoice, obviously. So we take care of that. And is that our option, obviously? If we get that back and it's it looks, you know, looks daunting to repair, then we'll, we might replace it depending yeah. on the item. Course. Well, that's the right and thing to do. Yeah, we've even repaired uh, lightning surge, uh, damaged equipment that way that's been burned up. Now, now that's a little more iffy situation, but <coughs> excuse sure. me, if you're under warranty, we're going to cover that no matter what for a full year. And that's one of the big things about MFJ products is you're not taking any kind of risk buying anything from us. 
And if you buy direct or through most of our dealers do a 30 day money back guarantee too. And they even allow you to try that thing out and then make it, if it doesn't work out for you, you, you send it back for a refund. But the no matter what warranty has been around for 40 well, something years and um, we've never really been hurt by it. Now I did have a lady one time, I'll tell you a funny story. Her husband was cussing something of ours. I don't know. It was just some little watt meter and she, <laughs> She threw it away. Oh, no. And, and then oh, she no. called up after the fact, and he wanted it back. And he said, uh, call them and get my no matter what warranty. I said, well, you know, that's that's fine, but we got to have something <laughs> to replace that with. we got to yeah. have some product that's there. <laughs> uh, I can't just replace air, you know. Yeah. I, I, I could say, oh, here you go, ma'am. Here's it back in the air. <laughs> You know, but no, we, we've had some oh, funny no. stories. I imagine have, you have. And Kevin, thank you. He's going to get a hold of you folks about all of that. He has one question. I think it's a good one. I really do. So he'd love to see a newer solid state using the newest MOSFETs. The RF kit is using right now. Any chance of maybe an upgrade to the MOSFETs? I think that's coming because I've seen the well, new I think the that's new amp. what we talked about earlier yeah, Larry the new, and the amp. new amplifier uh, yeah they're they're going to that because you're breaking it's, I my guess heart. it's more you're breaking a more my stable heart. transistor yeah <laughs> I love my 1306 you're breaking my heart brother yeah and, you, and you're gonna be fine with your 1306 yeah, yeah. is you know because you're a baby you, you you're taking care of it you treat it nice I do you're not yeah. gonna go uh go crazy on it no, but, um, no. So we, yeah, uh, but yeah, that's uh, that's something that's coming. Good. I still I just can't. I can't elaborate on that too much. But. I understand. I got. I still have the vision. It, what's the guy's name? The the TV. The former. The retired TV engineer that tests all the amps. I'm sorry. All the Did, tuners. All the tuners. On the oh, AL fifteen hundred. Uh, ben Stapp. Yeah. No, that, no, wait a minute. On the 1500. The 1500. He tested on the AL 1500. Oh, that, that's, Rob, that's Rob Hood. Yeah, that's the guy I was telling Kevin. <laughs> that, to man, I, I was talking a couple weeks ago on the channel about the AL 1500. That it's basically just kind of warming up there at 2500 watts. You don't do that because it's illegal, but, you know, <laughs> that, that amplifier is just a bundle of power. It's That uh, thing will put out... <laughs> amazing amount of water we we under spec it i mean as you know I mean, it will put out a full 2500 watts easily oh yeah and, yeah uh, you know, when, when tom roush designed that atr 30 the, the kevin had the one down below that mm -hmm. he tried to burn it up with his al 1500 and cranking it on you know just cw full power and he couldn't do it you know it's, it's got <laughs> wow. a silver plated edge wound roller inductor in it that just can take it Wow. They can take the beast. No kidding. Uh, any any possibility of, uh, has MFJ ever thought about building a water-cooled amplifier? Oh, interesting. I, I don't know. Uh, you That's know, I pretty don't know old technology, answer. honestly. It is. It does go oh, back really? a ways. Yeah, it's, I've got they, one of those air-cooled uh, air conditioning units sitting right beside me. That's water. You pour water in it. Yeah. It, Create, but it, you know it has to be right here by you. Yeah, but it does exactly. Help in the summertime exactly. when it gets hot here, I tell you what. In the old days, degrees. they would cool like high power amplifiers with tubes of water that'd be near the you know near the tube. So it was literally tubes filled with water circulating around the tubes to keep them cool, so they wouldn't burn up. Interesting. And they would cool them through I could a pond. See that. Yeah. yeah kind of how it worked but they were talking really really hot stuff so i think that the whole movement in the amplifier world right now is all solid state and trying to be able to make that better and more economical and uh, faster and putting all the whiz uh, gadgets in it sure i'd like to see us actually build one that's that's uh bare bones with hardly anything on it yeah. you know just just make one that's that's super uh, inexpensive because I, I think that that would sell very well kind of like an 811 amplifier in a solid state you know 400 watt guy sure uh, oh yeah I yeah that. and and then we are Agreed. trying to work on some of that too so that's pretty cool um question from the uk uh he says he has three mfj analyzer that's not working too well he needs to buy a new one if you were if he was in the market for a good analyzer you know something's good reliable rugged something rugged what would you recommend 
Well, I would recommend MFJs. Uh, they're built rugged. They are handy. I had a story from a guy one time. He dropped it from the tower, and he forgot about it. Went into a bucket of water. He <laughs> he actually unfroze it, <laughs> and then air dried out all the components and everything, and then and then brought it back to life. I thought, wow. So that can take a beating and keep on going. Wow. But yeah, they're they're handy. They're they fit in your hand. Uh, they're they're made out of a rugged metal. You got the analog meters, you got the digital meter, and you know we make them here in the USA. You got your no matter what, no questions asked warranty, and uh, I like that one. Now yep. there's another one that we sell that's just for HF. This little tiny guy. I should send one to you, Larry. It's a 223. It's full color graphics, but it, and it's about that big. Really? And but it's HF only, but full okay. color, and it is Cute. amazing. Uh, and wow. that, that's a, that's a neat little package. And, um, but I still like our analyzers. I tell you, we, we are so far behind on them, but we're making them and, uh, they still sell, uh, even though there's all these little nano gadgets out there. And, yeah. I mean, it's, it's built rugged. It's built, it was built by Mr. Jew to handle the tower work and all that kind of stuff Okay. and give you the anal. What's neat about us is we still give you the analog meters so that you can do a quick glance obviously the lcd is is the more accurate of the two but they're there so that you can be up on a tower and see you know what's going on mm -hmm. without without having to look at that tiny contrast to lcd yep yep so. and you know here's a question from eric he's from pennsylvania's call signs kilo three echo lima golf he wants to know do you have any numbers on front to back gain for the mfj 1848 one eight four eight. That's the uh, hex the, beam. That's the forty through six hex beam. It seems like we do. Um, <coughs> and while you're finding my... that, I'll read a few comments because you have some some good ones. Uh, Gunter in Germany, AL eight eleven is a forgiving amp and so durable. No other amp I know. And and yeah, I mean a, a tube amp for new hams. A tube amp is very forgiving. They tend to be a lot more forgiving than solid state. You just have to be careful with the tubes. The tubes can be a little bit, you know, a little bit fragile, and you just want to make sure you don't overdrive them. So as long as you're running something that's resonant and you don't push too hard, your tubes can last a long time. Just take good care of them. I did not find that data where I thought I was going to find it, but uh, I know we've got it somewhere because we do say that um, – Two elements per band, 40 and 30 meters are single elements, so they're going to have a little less gain on 40 and 30, but the other bands are going to be higher, 20 through 6. Mm -hmm. I don't have that data right in front of me, Larry, but I know it's got to be around somewhere. I know Randy Nash worked on that. You you met him also. Yes, yes. He's our guy around the around the world that does everything and every, anything. He, he knows how to work on all the machines, the presses, and the... Mirage, Ameritron, MFJ, you know it. Uh, okay. So, would he be? We would gotta he be have a... some graphs somewhere, and um, they're probably in the manual. But I, I don't have. I, what, you know me. I'm not a very technology, <laughs> technology savvy guy. So if I tried to look on my computer right now, I would lose you, Larry. So I don't want to do that. Well, I. I but if already... you ask me that question, I will find out the answer. Uh, Maybe put it on your to, Facebook just, page. You guys have mm -hmm. a good Facebook page. Maybe put it on the Facebook page. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah, we could do that too. Yeah, yeah that'd obviously. be easy. That'd be an easy way to do it. Thanks, Eric, for your question. I, I do like this. Is a good question. All right. So um, the question from Alex Alonzo: How much for the thirteen oh six solid state? Are those still at thirty four ninety nine? Yeah, I think so. Thirty four ninety nine is the retail. Now you will find that's before. Yeah, that's before tax, but. Yeah, you will find most dealers will discount that pretty heavily. And, and then they also will... Um, and you need uh, the connecting cable, too, to your rig. That's a, that's important. Because right. that's your rig Yeah, because that's along. where it's reading the band data off the rig. So exactly. it's automatic band switching. Yep. So, uh, otherwise, if you didn't have that, you wouldn't have the automatic band switching. But yeah, thirty four ninety nine. you're probably going to get free shipping from a dealer because they do over $100 uh uh, orders get free shipping, and you're looking at probably street price about thirty-two hundred. Okay. 
uh, there you go. from them, I would there think. You go. It, so, and it might be even lower than that in some locations or at a ham fest, you know, people are willing to, to dig a little bit deeper uh, on their discounts. Yep, yep. Hey, I want to welcome the Smoking Ape to the show. The Smoking Ape. Oh, the Smoking Ape. He's got his own YouTube channel, and you know what? He came here, and you know what? I appreciate that. Thanks, buddy. It's nice to see you. He, he and you, you and him, about the same guy. You know, you're very nice. You're a very uh, strong video professional well, reviewers. Well. And I think I, I think I'll, he's a little better. I, I'd, I'd give the nod up. to the the ape there on that. He does really well. <laughs> he's very good. Yeah, he does some he does some very good reviews. He sure does. Uh, Gunter from Germany is AL82 with match pair of three 500 ZGs and replaced stronger power supply unit. Did 2500 watts out too. Yeah, the 300 ZGs are fantastic. I, you know, yeah. gosh, what a great tube. Well, you what know our tube. our AL80B, which the AL82 was designed to add the second tube and get all that high power out of. But the AL80B is the most trouble-free amplifier in the Ameritron line. We offer, it's the only amplifier we give a two-year warranty on. Really? And that's, be, that's because it's just the very effective antenna, I mean amplifier, and it's got that 3-500 that as long as you take care of that baby, you know, you're, you're going to be smooth running for a lifetime. Hey, I got to ask you a question. Lots out, but, I, I got to ask yeah. you a question, okay? Do you need to take that call? Oh, no. She knows I'm on this thing. Are she just sure? forgot it. Okay. Yeah. I just want to make sure you don't get in any trouble. I'd say go take the no, call. I'm we can talk about something else. Um, no, I've got so, left. John Hummel Newell. By the way, John just got his ham radio license in Canada last week. He's got a new call sign. He just passed Victor Echo wow, 5 Joe Juliet great. Hotel November. How about that? Nice. Yeah. Pretty darn cool. Pretty darn Just cool. Passed. Let's see. Um, I think that is pretty much it. And Eric, I think that uh, what what Richard will try and do possibly is to get that front to back gain on the Facebook page. So if you follow uh, MFJ on Facebook at all, take a look. I'm sure when Richard finds it, he'll he'll get it up there. Or if you'd like, is there someone there at MFJ that he can reach out to on email to ask that question? He wants to know front to back on the you know the game numbers on the 1848 yeah. if, if he'll if he'll go to the website and find the email address it's going to be my address and i will get the answer for him and, okay. and send it back to him so eric that that email address will be in the description okay it's mfj enterprises oh sorry cust service at mfj enterprises.com so uh gain and front to back ratio ask the question I'll have that for you in, the, in the, the comment section here of this video, Eric, in the description, okay? Just find that. It'll be a link. Click on it, and you'll be able to get an email straight to MFJ to get your answer, okay? That'll give them a chance to do that. Because it's hard when you do something live, isn't it, Richard? When, you, when you're asked questions, you don't have everything because it's impossible. How many products do you guys have there? We, we counted uh, a couple of years ago, and it was like 2,000 products. And, I mean, we're counting... You know, even the cable assemblies that we pre-wire for guys because they don't want to wire it themselves. So you're looking at 2,000 different products on just the MFJ side, and then you add the M Maritron. And so we're lucky, we're probably 3,000 SKUs of finished goods. And wow. then if you can imagine what our metal shop and our, our people that are ordering parts <laughs> yeah. have to do. You know, if you got 3,000 finished goods SKUs, then you've got 160,000 part numbers all together i mean sure i i looked up um, a, a bracket the other day i just uh -huh. typed in bracket and it pulled up no, 120 no, different no, things. no. <laughs> uh, it, was, it was you can't find it that way you better have some knowledge of a part number or you're in trouble now after 26 years i can think of you know you you, you say uh 826b i say digital watt meter if you say uh Roller inductor tuner, I say 989D. You know, oh, there you I, go. I okay. can do that. I was going to say 969. Cattle. That's great. But even our even our ladies up in front, in the front office, the new ones, they're 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 getting savvy on this stuff, man. I mean, you, you work in it every day and hear it enough times, you're going to know what's going on. That's great. That's great. Um, and Ishmael, he, he answered your question about the, uh, the ICOM 9100. His suggestion would be to get yourself like an AL. 
11. Okay, so find a, a good AL811, or if you want to spend a little more money, go for the 811H. 811H is going to get you 800 watts on, C, on SSB. If you're going to be running on um, the 811, then you're going to be, isn't that 500 watts, Richard, or am I off on that? Well, 600 watts 600, uh, okay. on, on most bands. I mean, okay. some bands you make a 400, 500, 600. But, yeah, another thing you might mention, Larry, for uh, somebody that's hunting an amplifier is the used market is, is not bad. I mean, I've seen some pristine amplifiers go for a really good price because a lot of guys baby those things, and they mm -hmm. take care of them. And you're looking to get in, uh, a bargain on some from some of these guys. Well, you know, I want to say something real quick. You know, this is the first time I have ever interviewed a manufacturer where they suggested to take a look at the used market for something. God bless you for that, man. Seriously. I mean, that's that's not being a salesperson. That's being a representative of a company. There's a big difference between those two. Richard, I'm really that's, proud of you. Well done. That's Seriously. that's serious. I mean, I know I know when uh when Martin Jew used to go to the ham fest with me, I mean, he was always looking for used gear. He's a, he's a, he's an inexpensive guy. You know, he wants, he don't want to buy the most pristine expensive piece. He wants to buy the thing that's going to work for him and work for him well. So I know there's a lot of good MFJ gear out there because it's being used secondhand over and over and over again. And, uh, it's incredible. We get our repair department gets these analyzers in here and they've, they look old and beaten down, but we recalibrate them for them and they turn them back to new. They, they've been around 20 something years, you know, so it's, uh, you got to, you got to test out the used market a little bit. Absolutely. Guys yeah. are getting incredible deals out there. Well, and, and I appreciate you saying that because it is something that's important for people to realize there is a used market out there. And the fact you bring it up instead of selling new product right now is very I think it's really impressive because I know you're waiting for parts. I know things are slower in that respect. You've, you're trying to get the product out. You're trying to get suppliers happy, but you can't ship them to the retailers because you don't have the stuff from the factories. So you're in a bad crunch on those. Richard, I'm really impressed you didn't, you'd say what you just said about, hey, check the used market. That's well, we're, really we're, a good way to do business, man. We're here. You know, we... we uh... We run the business the way it should be run, and it's 72, 1972 to the to, uh, next year, 2022, Larry, will be the 50th year of MFJ. And uh, Martin Jew always told me, we're going to take care of these ham radio guys. When they walk in, we want to roll the red carpet out and treat them like, like we would want to be treated. And and that's 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 the whole deal. I mean, you treat people the way you want to be treated. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that's the, that's a key thing. Yeah. So, yeah, taking care of business is one way of, uh, you know, wow. being honest and offering up the whatever suggestion you have. Sometimes it's it's going outside of uh, buying a new MFJ. You know, it's going and telling somebody to, to try something out on the used market. There's no reason why not to. Yeah, absolutely. I want to welcome Mike Oswald. His call sign, Alpha Alpha 7 Mike Oscar. He says, late but glad to be here. Mike, it's really a pleasure to have you here at the very end. Richard, anything you'd like to say? I know that, you know, like I say, everybody is shorthanded with parts and getting getting product out. Everything is delayed right now. It's just because of the coronavirus. Richard, what just I've said a million times, but what's the reason? Why are we delayed on stuff? Kind of go over stuff, will you? Well, in the case of, of uh, Ameritron, uh, and then in, into the summer of 20, this is two years now, so 2019. In the summer of 2019, um, there were some parts problems with analyzers and tuners and amplifiers that put us just completely whacked out. And then, of course, the COVID thing hit, and then there was people problems, and there was parts problems that the supply chains from china in in particular have been way slowed down customs you got ships out there larry in the in the california ocean piled up waiting to get in uh they can't get checked in by customs so the deliveries are late we went through a power supply crunch where we didn't have power supplies to sell to people and everybody wanted that little 30 amp mfj power supply and we just didn't have them um I don't know what else to say to it other than it's happening to all kinds of companies across the board and it's real. 
it's very real. Now, are we manufacturing? Yeah, we've got all our people working back there, and they're working as hard as they can to get product out, and they're beautiful people. They, they've worked hard all of their lives, and they're doing a job that's uh, keeping people in business here. MFJ's, we're a hobby business. Isn't that amazing? It and is. we've kept these people in jobs for 20, I'm here 26 years. There's some people here 45 years plus, yeah. and we have never had a, a shutdown, never stopped working. Uh, we're manufacturing goods, and we're trying to get them out the door, and we're trying to get them to our dealers. Everybody's upset, but most people understand what's going on, and uh, until you actually work in the field, it's kind of hard to really understand it because you, you go to Walmart, and you can go buy a shirt if you want a shirt, but some of these, uh, like I said, my couch, I'll bring that back up. I've been waiting on the couch now nine weeks. They told me two to 12 weeks. Well, it's leaning toward the 12 week. Uh, <laughs> all the supply chains are down. Yeah. If you wanted to build a house right now, bad timing, buddy. Plywood is skyrocketed through the roof and then gas prices are going up. Yep. And I don't want all of this to be gloom and doom because it's really not. Our people are working and they're working strong and they're putting out product, but it's going right into the shipping bay and it's got somebody's name on it. That's all I got to say. In yeah. order to get something right now, you got to order it and get in line, with, you know, especially with one of the big dealers. Yeah. They're, they're going to get product faster. They stock it more than we do. Uh, and have, be patient. It's coming. And when it comes, you're going to be so excited. It's going to be like a kid on Christmas morning. Yep. There you getting go. That, getting Man. that gun. Uh, what, was that, what was that movie with, with Christmas? <laughs> he shot his eye out with his glasses, oh. Larry. My goodness. A Christmas it's story. A yeah. Christmas story, Richard. Yeah, yeah, it's the best movie in the history of ever. You know So that. when you finally get that Hold on product, a second, Richard. Hold on. Amplifier, that tuner, you're going to love it, and you're going to be so happy. Richard, you ready for this? Yeah. Can you, can you tell me which movie this, okay? Tell me which movie this is from. <laughs> oh, don't anybody move. Hold it right there. A fuse is out. I didn't hear it. Well, oh, okay. Well, that makes me embarrassed. It was a Christmas story. It's when <laughs> it's when it's when the old man says, "Hold it! Don't anybody move! A fuse is out." Remember, Ralphie says my dad could replace you know fuses faster than jackrabbits on a date. Yeah. yeah. Great what a movie. great movie. That's that's oh. one of those movies. Is if it's on, you got to watch it. Oh. You know what? Because, I watch uh, that Ralphie, movie. Ralphie was a was, the whole movie was a great. I mean, I watch that movie all along, man. A lot of different uh, trivia over the years, you know. But uh, yeah. the, you're out there in Goonie Land. I, I mean, I, I always forget yeah, when I go to Oregon right. that I need to go yeah. go to where the Astoria. Was. That was my classic movie. I would still watch that one again, even though it's a kid's show. You know. Oh, the Goonies is a great movie. It really is. Yes. I want to welcome Bob coming from New South. He's coming from South Wales. How about that? His call sign wow. Golf Whiskey Six Bravo Romeo. Sorry, Romeo Bravo Zulu. Sorry, the eyes are getting a little bad there, Bob. Thanks for coming. We do appreciate it this evening. Thanks for coming from Great Britain. Thank you very much. Also, good night to Stu Stu Foster in Great Britain. He is going to go to bed. Wendy is here from the state of Florida. Whiskey, whiskey four. Lima Sierra. Wendy, hello, and thank you for coming. Richard, any I'll final be thoughts? Her pretty soon on vacation. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> good for you, man. You going to go somewhere yeah, fun? I'm, I'm I do. Down to the to the White Sands uh, pretty soon. Nice. You going to West Coast or East Coast? No, right down there in Florida. Where she's I know. At. Which which coast? You going to go? Oh, 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 oh the, the Gulf Coast. Oh, okay. Right so here, you're the Gulf. Right you, you're going to be only in about six, six, seven hours, and I can be there in the most pristine nice. white sand and green Gulf waters uh, of. Uh, oh man. Oh yeah. I'm, I'm I can't wait. Yeah, so you're going to be then on the Panhandle or near Pensacola? Yeah. Okay. Panhandle, right. yeah. 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 Near right. Pensacola. I like to co go to where they call, I call it grown up land. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. I'm not the party, I'm not the party I used to be. I, I like to go to the place where I just walk out and out of the front of my place and then there's my sand and I lay down and, yeah. and that's it. Yeah. No more, no more hanging out and going to the parties anymore. You know? How long has it been? Seriously, I've known you a while. I, how long has it been since you went on a vacation? Well, I skipped the last 
two years because of the COVID thing. You know, my yeah. wife was scared about it, and yeah. but we're going this year. We just, we said we're going to go. I mean, we and and it's been you know it's been tough. I've had to, you know, I I'm the one that travels around all the ham fest. I love it. Yeah. I I want to travel everywhere I can. I want to meet new people and talk to folks and shake hands and kiss babies, you know, and all that stuff. <laughs> I don't want to be like a politician, silly, Sam. Man, but I do want to kiss the babies and shake the hands, you know. So. What? Uh, let me ask you real quick, because uh, I ask you here. Huntsville's still open. And that's, yes, that's a big yes, one. We're, you, you we're excited? very excited about that. Yeah, and uh, we are slated to be there, and I'm hoping and praying that everything goes all right, and then it should be the biggest event of the year for this year. Anyway. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. Date in Orlando had to cancel. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Huntsville is a very, very good show. Southern hospitality you've always liked. Uh, yeah. Sweet tea and you know that bright blue skies and sunshine. There's no rain at that time. It can be pretty hot, but it's a beautiful location to visit because there's also the space and rocket center that somebody could turn it into a little vacation. And the 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 arena, the Von Braun Center is huge. I mean, it's it's like like the days of the Fort Wayne Ham Fest. They had this huge arena and they opened that thing up. They're going to open up both sides so everybody can space out, and uh, it's going to be a beautiful thing. I'm I'm excited about August. That's going to be you know how big I only that's going to be. My new, Seriously, I had new trade show tables that are built on wheels. I only got to use them one and a half times, Larry. In the last <laughs> Huntsville, by the way, the for folks that'd be interested in going down in Louisiana. What's that? They had us. They let us do Friday night, but then we had to get out of there on Saturday because the governor shut it down. So. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Well, for folks yeah. that might be interested in going to Huntsville to see a real ham fest where people are walking around, you know, buying, trading, selling stuff, and meeting the manufacturers. Well, it's going to be Saturday, August twenty first, from nine a.m. to four thirty p.m., and then Sunday, August twenty second, nine a.m. to three p.m. at the Von Braun Civic Center in Huntsville, Alabama. So please make sure if you can. I don't know if there's really any tickets left, but call them, please. Feel free. It's get a hold of them. It's going to be the first big ham fest of the last two years really. yes uh, it's huge and what's it, funny it will be a big event on their website it's great they have the hours days oh, minutes, everybody and who's seconds anybody will open. be there the flex the Elecraft, the icom the kenwood yesu all the big antenna companies uh everybody's gonna mfj will be there yeah i mean it's that's the only one that's the Damn one that's standing Outlet, giga parts uh ham world all these big dealers are they'll come down there and and they're gonna get. They're gonna put on a show. That's for sure. Oh, it's gonna be huge. It's like all that pent up energy from not doing Hamfest for a year and a half almost, or oh, actually longer than that. And then all of a sudden, here's Huntsville, and it's summertime. Oh man, it's gonna yes. be huge. I'm gonna hug everybody I can, Larry. Kiss babies. Don't forget kiss babies. <laughs> 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 we have been live with Richard Stubbs from MFJ in Mississippi. And we are honored and thankful that you came on. Please give Mr. Jew our very best. He is truly so special to me. You know that. And uh, would you please tell him that all of us here from around the world said hello to him. Would you please? I will certainly do that, Larry. And, of course, uh, to you, too. Stop. We're not worth uh, no, I'm not We're not worthy. worthy. Yeah, I'm not worthy. Don't do that. I appreciate <laughs> you coming, man. I really do. And do me one other favor. Tell the bag ladies I said ho and I love them, okay? They're special to me. I I'll, I might have to give them a big old sloppy kiss from you, Larry. Do that. Yep, because I love those ladies. <laughs> those ladies are great. Oh, my gosh. If you could just meet these ladies in the back room, they're right when you first come in. They literally are just to your right. And they are the nicest ladies in the world. They're so sweet. And imagine all day long, what you do is basically package things up, tape them, put them in boxes and close them. That's what they do. And they never complain. They're grateful for working and they have great attitudes. That's what they do. And they're so wonderful. They're just so cool. All all of our people are really dedicated to what they do. and, And I just, I love them to death. They all, they all have been working really hard during this, pandemic i mean when you talk about the frontline workers i mean we were right here we never shut down yeah we just kept on working through this thing and and you know practicing our safe distancing and wearing the mask and but it's been 
it's been um I mean, they want to get paid, obviously, and you sure. got to work to get paid. So, well, uh, um, before we close, I do want to share this one thing that most people don't know about you. And there's only one other guy, right? You guys had a major ice storm there. It was huge. Yes. And there was only two people in the building that day. Remember, it was you and, and Jimmy. And Jimmy. Yep. Jimmy and Allen, Jimmy. My, my steadfast warrior. He's my ham fest partner. Uh, he never says anything. He don't talk a whole lot at all, but he's going to be there working <laughs> and knocking out those analyzer repairs and sending them back to the customers. And yeah, we, we drove in every day, but uh, yeah, it was, we were told not to because the ice was uh, thick on the roads and, and it was dangerous. There was a lot of accidents. People in, in Mississippi don't know how to operate in snow, much <laughs> less ice. Ice is, is worse. Ice obviously. is terrible. It's the worst of all. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Well, you know, but you were there. I remember asking you, man, why are you there? And you said, because I got to take care of my family. Yeah. Yep. And Mr. Jew, Mr. Jew came in uh, against Did the better really? advice of, of Randy Romero. He came in, but then he realized <laughs> there's nothing, nothing really nothing to, do, to do. So do. he went back home. <laughs> but he only, he slid into a uh, ditch uh, and we had oh. to get him, we had to rescue him. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. But you're talking about dedication. He was going to be here if, if all possible. But then we had another ice storm on top of the first ice storm, and and it got worse. Uh, it was crazy. Wow. Not good for Mississippians, that's for sure. No kidding. No kidding. Well, Richard, before we go, I do want to say some goodbyes to you from around the world here. Andy Cowley from Great Britain says goodbye and the best, and that's the inside of a 998 RT right there. That's it. That's the blood and guts of a great little, great, a full power QRO tuner. Uh, Gunter from Germany says um, he's sure that Frederick Schaffen is going to take place next year. He can't wait to see you and Ray Novak and all the gang in Frederick Schaffen. That'll be fun. Yeah. Holding the beers. There you go. There you go. <laughs> Lee, Lee Rosselli, Whiskey Alpha 8, Romeo November, Bravo. Richard has been a huge help to me. Nikolai from Romania. Thanks, Richard. Wish you hey, all Lee. the best. I yeah. know who that Lee Rosselli is. Yeah, we've been working together for a few weeks here now. There you go. Richard's uh, big, big goodbye there from um, from Germany. Just uh, he is by just off the Rhine River, literally right there. Um, he's not far from Wiesbaden. If you know Sheer Rock City, I think it's Sheer Rock uh, something. I always mess it up. Larry, I was born in Munich. And I graduated from high school in Frankfurt. That's right. I'm a military did. brat. I okay. skied the Zooks pits. Skied it. Okay. Been to it. All there the way down to the uh, the hall where we got the beers. <laughs> <laughs> in high school. only That would only happen in Germany. Never anything yes. else. It was a beautiful <laughs> thing. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Richard Harper says, please tell Richard hello. This is Rick from the ham station. Oh wow, the ham station way back. Those guys, they were the they were the guys from Dayton, man. Woo! They partied and worked hard. Wow. Oh, there you go, Richard. Thanks, buddy. What an honor it is to have you here. Thank you. That's a big comment. John Patrick Reed wanted to say hello. And uh, everybody loves the duck. So there you go. Richard Stubbs. Yeah, I like my rubber ducky. That was a, a gift by a ham that came for the tour. So, folks, we are back in action. You can come tour MFJ, and I'd love to show you around. And, and it is a tour that is so special. If you have a chance, go to Starkville, Mississippi. If you're somewhere maybe around Memphis, you know, even in Nashville, you're not far. You're not far. If you're in Alabama, you're close. My goodness, even if you're in Arkansas or you're over in, uh, say, you're in Cape Girardeau, Missouri, you can get there. And it's not that long of a drive. Not far from Tupelo, either. This place is beautiful. Um, and, and it's not just one building. It's multiple buildings that, that you'll see the magic of MFJ. And, and that so much is not done on machines. It's done by hand. They build this stuff by hand. This is like... 1960 but it never changed they kept employing people to keep them in business so that they could take care of their families too by building things by hand that's mfj be pretty cool stuff all right guys we're going to thank you mr richard stubbs from mfj and we want to thank you for taking the time today richard i know it's getting late your time thanks for the time brother 
All right, Larry. Thank you. And I'll tell Mr. Drew about uh, the little show here and how you feel about him. He, he knows it. He felt the love. You you are the right guy for this he is, deal. He is my special guy. <laughs> Thank you guy. so much for having there, us on. You know something? I'll tell you. There, and just before I go, there is... I, I think it should be Ham Radio 101 for any business, whether you're selling transceivers, antennas, power supplies, tuners, coax, whatever. And, and this isn't going to matter to anybody who doesn't care. It's okay, but it, it you should. You should all spend one hour with Martin Jew and talk about business and talk about doing the right thing. You will learn so much valuable information, not only about business, but life and doing it the right way by spending an hour with that man. He is my favorite human being in ham radio for that reason, because you only learn more and get better by being around him. He's the best. You promised me 50. Remember, don't. Yeah. Yep. All right. All right. Hey. True right. Southern gentleman he is, that's for sure. Very And very soft spoken. <laughs> <laughs> very soft spoken. He is. Yeah, very soft spoken. Like okay. Best there is. All right. Take care, buddy. God All bless right, you. Talk to you soon. Big kiss. <laughs> See you later, Richard. That's great. Richard Stubbs, live from MFJ in Mississippi. What a joy it was to see him. Wow. We don't uh, we don't get that off a of, you know whole chance to do that a lot, but we at least got to do it today. For me, that was a joy, and I'm grateful to have that opportunity with you. So we're gonna pop the screen back on the right place because if I didn't, then you you know you wouldn't see me, and that well that might be good. That's all right. There you go. That's Richard. I love Richard. And the reason I like Richard is because like his company, they just are really good people. They truly are. Some of the nicest people that are in ham radio is MFJ. And I know the jokes. I've heard them before a million times. Everybody in ham radio has heard them. But they employ so many people in that company. And if you have a problem and continue to have a problem and continue to have a problem, they'll work with you. I don't know about communication issues. I don't know, but I can tell you that I've had a few problems. They fixed it. That's, that's my experience. So that's Ham Radio Live today. We're running a little late, but that was great. I appreciate Richard Stubbs for coming on the channel from MFJ. Hope he answered your questions. If you have any additional questions regarding MFJ products, please feel free, put them in the comment section. I'll do my best to pass them along to Richard and make sure and answer your comments in the comments screen. All right, my friends, until tomorrow at about uh, 20 UTC. My name's Larry. My call sign's Kilo 7, Hotel November. Enjoy the sign-off. Enjoy the sign-off today. I can't do it very well. I'd like to be able to do an Irishman. I'd like to do the Irish uh, accent, but I can't do it. But it is from Ireland, and it is from the 80s. So excuse the hair, because we all remember what it looked like. But it's pretty cool. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Live, everybody. God bless you. Until tomorrow. Thanks for watching and good night. Well, Wednesday evening on RT1 starts out with a review of regional news stories in Nationwide at 7 o'clock. That's followed by Coronation Street at 7.30. And once again, trouble looms on the horizon for the McDonald's as their marriage would appear to be stretching beyond the point of no return. Time will tell. Diagnosis murder is at five past eight, then later at 9.30, there's a moving documentary which tells the extraordinary story of four seriously ill children who quite simply want to be treated just like any other children, just kids. NYPD Blue follows at 10 and Marketplace is at 5 to 11. Well, on Network 2 tomorrow evening, hopefully, hopefully, there will be live coverage of the big match between Portugal and uh, Jack Charlton's Republic of Ireland. Programme uh, will begin at 7.30, kick off at 8, uh, so you'll not miss any of the action should the action go ahead on the field of play. And uh, if that is the case, uh, you're not going to miss any of the action on Coronation Street either. That's here on RT1 at 7.30, so fingers crossed, uh, hopefully that rain will stop.
Well, that's all for tonight here on RT1. Hope you enjoyed our film. Until next time, from Colin Quinn, our director this evening, and myself, Noel Fogarty. A very good night to you. Do sleep well. Good night. Okay, everybody. Well, it was uh, a Westminster Abbey chorister in this time. His paternal grandparents were, were Russian. <laughs> That's so there you are. There pretty funny. All right, but so folks, we are at a different part of the show again today. Different than yesterday. Yesterday, saw if somebody get money back from a scam. All right. The reason I'm showing this, and this will be the last one we'll show. I did get some people who emailed me saying, could you show some more of the people that get scammed and what happens? Today I'll show you when the scammer gets it back, where it hurts the most, right in the pocketbook. Now, before I do this, I want to share what the scams are. What scams are going on right now, at least here in the United States, have to do with Social Security? Keep in mind, Social Security comp the Social Security office will never, ever call you. So please, you get a call about Social Security, click, hang it up. If you have a question, call your Social Security office. Just call them and ask. Simple way to solve it, all right? If someone from Microsoft calls and says that you have a refund coming, hang up the phone. Call up Microsoft. Ask them if you have a refund coming, all right? If you have some other company that says they have a refund for you, hang up the phone. The point is what's happening is they will get into your computer and in your banking and they will make changes to your account. Instead of your $500 refund, you now have a $5,000 refund. And you must now get the extra $4,500 back to the company who now overpaid you. It's a common scam and it's one that they literally get millions and millions of dollars per year doing. Now, before I show you this, please remember, hang up the phone. Since ham radio is so devoted to folks who are older in age, and I don't mean that disrespectfully, please understand that the average age now is over 70 here in the United States. This is a prime age for these people to attack. And I'm just trying to do something here to protect you. This is really, really important. Okay. So if you'd like to listen to this and watch it, I think you'll laugh your head off. Providing you don't mind really bad language. I will say this has some pretty crummy language in it, but you'll see the scammer get it where he doesn't want it. Watch. Here's what happens when somebody who is trying to scam what he thinks is a little old lady because he's seen her bank account 
and this is how they typically go, seeing her bank account, and what's going to happen next. Take a look as the scammer all of a sudden sees things not quite going his way. And why did you, ma'am, why are you redeeming it? Why are you redeeming the card? Um, well, if you ask Google here how to redeem Google cards for cash, Ma'am, but not in your it account. Says, uh, not to go in your account. And uh, click on the left. Oh, look, it's right here. It's right here. Hey, this is. I'm doing this so you'll leave my family alone. I don't. I don't know why. I this will fuck so your family. You to understand. I will fuck your family. I, I will kill your family. This is so. This is so. This is absurd. If you don't. The person the screaming in the background life. is obviously the scammer who is threatening this little old woman. I won't get it. I won't get it. I won't get it. What do you mean? Ma'am, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm adding this to... Ma'am, are you a prostitute? I'm adding this no! to your cash. No! 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 Now, the reason why this scammer is screaming like this, there's no excuse. But the reason they're angry is because what seniors are told to do is go get gift cards from Target, Walmart, Best Buy, or, you know, the Google Play Store. Those then are exchanged for cash. That's how it works. Okay. They can be exchanged for cash. And they're exchanged for cash through a company out there called Paxful. Paxful changes it into Bitcoin, literally Bitcoin. So it becomes cryptocurrency. It's converted into cryptocurrency through Paxful. Okay. So you never, ever fall for this. But here's what happens when a scammer actually sees every one of these gift cards redeemed back to the person's own account. Do not redeem that. Do not read him that! Do not read him that! Now I fuck your family. Hello. Hello. Now I fuck hey, your whole family. Hey, hey, hey. Now, whoa, 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 whoa. now I cool fuck your whole down. family. Cool your jets. Now I fuck your whole family. I have family. one more card now. for you. There's one. Well, hey, I have bitch, one more bitch, five hundred dollar card, board. and then I have one, one more. Uh, what was it? Uh, four hundred dollar card. Cause I subtracted a hundred dollars. Cause you were being mean earlier. Now so. listen to me, bitch. Now listen to me, you motherfucking bitch. Hey, hey, you call Listen down. to me. Your family, hey, I will hey, kill hey, them. Hey, 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 hey. I will kill your family you said members. Before? Do you remember what you said, honey? Listen. Do you know I'll one play, thing? I'll play it back you for you. I'll thing? play. It, I rem I have a recording of it. I have a record. You said earlier. I have it on my iPad. Hold on. Yeah. Okay. Just wait and watch Here's what it says on my iPad. You said this earlier. I, Steve Watson. I will make you a prostitute. Tell you, okay, that I am not going to hold you back and not going to touch your money only and only. I, if you I don't give a fuck about five it. Cards or five I don't give a fuck about it. Target. Five cards, okay. and I already did a. Few, I already did three of them. I have. I have two more. Did you hear it? Did you oh, give it to let me? Let me play it back one more time. Did you I give it to me? I did not got any card. I did not got any card. Okay, I that did I am not, not got any card. You back and not gonna touch your money only and only if you give me five cards of five hundred dollars each of Target. Okay, we oh, had you never gave me a the deal. Card. We had a deal, so I have two more cards to give you. All right. You got three. Here's two more. Okay, listen to me. Uh, listen to me. Down. Listen to me. Okay. When okay. did you give me a card? When did you give? When did you give me a card? You Steve, never I gave me a single card. I just gave you the card. You. you Why the fuck the are you redeeming it, bitch? Why <laughs> you, the fuck are you, you redeeming you've it? You've been on the phone with me the whole time. I, I can't understand why this is so complicated for you. Let me here. Let me go ahead and scratch Why out the did next you card, redeem Steve. it? God. Why did you redeem it? Get, Why oh. did you redeem it? Are you a mad bitch? Uh, Steve, can you Are help you me? Are you a mad bitch? Steve, can you help me hide my bank transactions so my husband doesn't see this? Steve, you promised you would do that.
You will go to jail now. Wait, you will go to jail. You How? just wait. Why would I go to jail? I am going to show you. Because you redeemed my fucking card. Oh, Why Steve. did you redeem it? Steve, Steve, calm down. Let's re let's rewind for a second. You are going you have the ability to steal $260,000 from my family. Correct? But now you see we, what I do. We had a gentleman's wait. A, we had a transaction, a gentleman's deal, I think you called it, over the phone. And I recorded it. Oh, he's angry. He said, now wait and see. I'm going to bait him a little bit, and I'm going to go onto my bank account. I can pause the timer, too. What it, was that a... That's perhaps the mad... The maddest? Is that a word? The most mad? Um, I have experienced a scammer to date. I'm having a problem with my computer. I can't really move my mouse. I was wondering... If that's something that yeah, you're doing, yeah, hold on. or listen to me, ma'am. Listen to me. I wanted to say something to you. Can I tell you, please? Yeah. Ma'am, you have wasted all the cards. Okay. You no, have I, wasted I still have two all cards. the cards. I still have two cards left on me. Then why did you redeem the remaining? Why did you did this? Why you did this? Well, I redeemed the first three cards did I... because. You want cash. Ma'am, did I... Yeah, tell earlier, I so gave you, you a bunch of cash? different... If you so remember, you... earlier, honey, I offered to give you, um, gosh, what was it? $20,000 worth of anything you wanted off Amazon, and you didn't want it. Ma'am, can you wanted I tell cash. you something, ma'am? Can I tell you, please? And so please, you ma'am, can I tell you something? Ma'am, can I tell you something? You said, fine, ma I'll take $2,500 can I tell you something? Can I tell you something? gift cards, and I... Ma'am, are you a prostitute? Okay, ma'am, are you a prostitute? I'll get you the, the $2,500 cards. And so, so far, I redeemed... How will you give it to me? Uh, How will you give it to me, ma'am? You have already wasted all the cards. The, now, I will them. suck your happiness. So I will what I'm trying family, to figure okay? out how to do, though, honey, is I need to hide the transaction on my bank. Is that something you could help For, me with? I am not going to help you. I will not help you. You used my cards. I am going to use your money. Okay? Uh, okay. Sure. Steve? Let's get, one thing, let's get one thing straight. Watch this. First of all, Please. I still have two cards. I have not used all the cards. Why did you... Why second did you all, use second, the three second, cards? You did I ask you? Did I you ask you to the raise the cards? You told no, me. Are you mad? Are you mad? Are you mad? Why did you waste three cards? Why did you waste three cards? I Why did you waste three cards? I didn't waste three cards, Steve. I gave Why you cash. Why did you redeem it? To give you cash. How did you God give me cash? How did you give me cash? Next time. No, if you no, say the same thing over and over, me, 
expecting a different okay, result. Listen to me, man. Your wife is going I'm to be man. not very happy. Um, one of the things that you want to do as you mature, as you get older, is you start to realize that sometimes you have to use your brain a little bit. So why don't you ask me that question differently so I understand you? Okay. Okay, now you understand something. The cards which you have used is worthless now, okay? The no, cards which you have redeemed it's worth $1, is worthless. But it is in your fucking house. It what is not that? with me anymore. What did it you is say? in your email ID. I can't hear what it you're saying. It is with you. It is with you now. It is not with me. I want my cards or else you lose all the money today. Well, I mean, I, I still have sure the money in my account. I have all the money in my account okay. right now. It I says, will shot your husband uh, by his blank in his head. I'm sorry, what? Hey, I will shoot Steve, them. Steve, Steve, Steve. Hey, bitch, did I tell Steve, you to you have huh? no what idea what, what you're talking about. You're acting like uh, you're just throwing a temper tantrum of epic proportions. Clearly, I'm clearly you your have lost your, your mind. mind. I will kill him in front of you. No, you can't. I will. You can't. You can't. You just see what I can do. You are an evil. You just see what I can do. Evil man, you know that. So there you go. I could have went the extra 15 minutes, but I think that made the point. They will threaten you. They will threaten you with, you know, killing your family. They'll do anything they can to get money out of you. Just hang up the phone. Just get rid of them. Hang up the phone and don't engage. And never, ever, ever let them see your computer. If you're having a hard time with your computer, contact Microsoft directly. Make sure that the ad on the internet site doesn't say ad. No, contact Microsoft directly. If it's an Apple product, contact Apple directly. The key here is to contact the company that made the product, not contact a company that says they can fix the product. There's a big difference. Contact the company. But if you get the call saying you have a refund, saying your social security has been compromised or someone else is using your social security number, right? Or if somebody says there's viruses on your computer and you need to get those off, don't click that ad. Don't click that. Don't ever click that. Don't contact the company that made your product. They'll help you fix it. Okay? Just don't get scammed. Don't be the victim of this because people are losing a lot of money in their life savings. You worked way too hard for that money. Don't lose it to somebody who really cares that much about you as they would talk to what they thought was an elderly lady. Keep that thought in mind. Until tomorrow. God bless you. Thanks for watching Ham Radio Live. Goodbye, everybody.